You are listening to the Daily Talks podcast where my mom, Daly, empowers parents like you with parenting tips. My mom's mission is to help parents make their child raising experience easier and more enjoyable by sharing valuable lessons to save them unnecessary struggles. The Daily Talks podcast is for any person already parenting or planning on parenting a child. Each week you'll hear different experts talk with my mom about important aspects of parenting, self-care, and of course her specialized area of bullying awareness and prevention. If you haven't subscribed to the podcast yet, go ahead and do so now wherever you may be listening. And don't forget to set up your alerts so that you don't miss any episodes. Let's get started. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in to the Dali Talks podcast. I have another special guest today, Coach Carlita. We met through Clubhouse. Mm-hmm. And yeah, it's been amazing to hear about what she does and who she helps. I think what fascinated me most about Gala is the modalities that she uses to help people. But I'm going to let her tell you more about what she does. So, Gala, <laughs> to, the, to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me. I'm really excited. And like you said, it's it's been a few years that we've met, you know, uh, digitally, I guess. Right. Um, <laughs> so now we're like here kind of in person online, uh, which is really exciting. And I'm excited to just be on here. And uh, again, thank you so much for having me. Oh, of course, of course. This has been a long time coming because I think I invited you a long time ago, but you aren't ready or maybe I'm mm-hmm. waiting for somebody else. But I know that. I have no idea what happened. <laughs> <laughs> I think what happened is that you got pregnant. Probably. <laughs> you know, you're, you know, you're busy with that, Um, you know, creating life. <laughs> just that. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so... Uh, tell the public um, who you are and what you've been doing, how you're helping people. Yeah, so my name, as you said, is Carla Rodriguez. I go by Coach Carlita. You'll find me like that on all the social platforms. And I'm an NLP and hypnosis coach and trainer and practitioner. I also practice in something called timeline therapy, um, which is another modality. But what I do is I guide women, women entrepreneurs, mamapreneurs now, to understand their communication, to speak confidently and efficiently to create the lifestyle of wealth and health and health that you desire, that you so desired. And with NLP, it's just something that's so important when it comes to lifestyle implementation and having it as a base. Uh, So that's what I do because it changed my life, the way I carry myself, the way that I see the world or that someone sees me. And it's just something that I want to share with the with the rest of, of the world, really. Mm-hmm. And right now, like I said, um, with mamas who are in entrepreneurship, because in business, if you don't have mindset, like there's going to be a moment where you're like WTF. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There's going to be lots of those. Mm-hmm. And you have to have that right, yeah. right type of mentality to just stay in there. Because what I tell people is that the only difference between you and a millionaire is that they just kept going. Yeah. You can't just... You know, like, oh, I fell and I can't get up, you know. Yeah. <laughs> you gotta get up and you gotta keep going. I know. You mentioned NLP and I'm a fan of it. I learned mm-hmm. about it right around the same time I I learned about you because I was, actually, I remember telling you I had just bought a book on mm-hmm. NLP. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And, oh, man, it is uh, definitely different, I'm sure, reading it versus like going through the teachings with you know, a, uh, a coach like mm-hmm. you. Can you uh, first explain what NLP stands for? Yeah. So NLP stands for Neuro Linguistic Programming. Uh, Programming. Oh, my God. Let me speak clearly. First of all, NLP is Neuro Linguistic Programming. And essentially, it's a modality that was started back in the late 70s into the 80s by two men, uh, John Grinder and um, Richard Bandler. And these guys, what they wanted to do was that they realized how language is so important and also the other guy one of them was a great modeler modeler and the other one was a linguistics professor at the same university and so they decided to model from other people who they thought were excellent and so they combined all these modalities of a hypnotherapist a family therapist and someone who does just all therapy and they brought it together and they made NLP which essentially it is how we communicate in life, both verbally and non-verbally. The neuro stands for how we take information in through our five senses. The linguistic is the verbal, non-verbal process, process of our communication. And programming is what have we um, experienced in life and how are we using that now with what we're doing 
And how can we also like program ourselves going towards the future where we want to go? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's also a model of excellence. So it's not about starting from scratch. It's about how can we model someone that's doing some, already doing something great? And how can I implement it for myself to work for me? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so it's pretty much kind of like shifting your mindset, like reprogramming yeah. the way that you think and the way that you process your yeah. topics, right? Yeah. So let's just backtrack, right? So what I love about it is that it, I, I see it as a base that you can add into anything. Um, the reference that I sometimes give, because I used to always play video games growing up, was The Sims. In The Sims, you have your character, and he can change his clothing. And depending on what area, what environment it, you're in, that's who that character becomes. So NLP, what I love about it, is that it can be put in any context, and it applies to that context. So if you want to use it in parenting to understand how your kids communicate, if you want to use it as a teacher and teach kids um, in different ways in their communication style as well. Mm -hmm. If you want to use it for business growth because you want to hire people, then you understand their language, you understand their processes, you understand their strategies, and then you hire based on that, based on their values as well. So that's the really cool thing about NLP is that it's something that is based on model of excellence, language, the excellent people who Richard and John saw right who they modeled from who were therapists so understanding the unconscious process as well and how where our focus is leads us to our state meaning our emotion that then can lead us to our behavior that which then can lead us to our results mm -hmm. so it's a modality that can be applied honestly to anything mm -hmm. so you said something there that i i'm always wanting to learn more of you said unconsciousness it is There's so much of what we do and how we think comes from that and unconsciousness. I think people confuse for subconsciousness, which is not as deep. Is it? Yeah. Right. Yeah. Because exactly. that unconscious, 100 like the thoughts that we're not even aware that we're having. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. So, so the unconscious is one of the things that I love about the unconscious that is it's designed to protect us. Mm -hmm. It's designed to repress memories and situations that. Maybe we can't process at the moment, but it also will bring things up when our body is ready to accept or learn those things. Mm -hmm. So you said here about the unconscious. Think of the iceberg, right? It's the most basic example I can give you. Above the water, you have your conscious. Below the water, like right before, let's say 10 feet in, you have your subconscious. Mm -hmm. And then deep, 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 all the way down deep, that, that part that the Titanic hit that nobody saw. Yeah. Like way down there. Those are things that we ha are not even aware of. Mm -hmm. Like those are things that we don't know about yet that we may, who knows when we will know about. The subconscious is like things that we're starting to like be aware of that we kind of know what we didn't know before. Mm -hmm. Right. And then the conscious is things that we are consciously aware of. Just like, for example, right now, if you're listening to me explain this to you and as I'm telling you that you're listening to this, you're becoming aware that you are listening with your ears. Or maybe you're sitting on that couch or on this seat right now, and then you all of a sudden you feel your feet planted on the ground and you feel your butt on the seat, right? You just became conscious of that, which is something that you were not conscious about mm -hmm. just a few seconds ago. Right. Yeah. I love that example because I think a lot of people confuse it. They still walk away like, wait, I don't get it. Because um, I use yeah. it a lot when I teach about bullying. You know? mm -hmm. Yeah. Because there's so much that goes into how we treat people sometimes mm -hmm. it comes those unconscious um beliefs that would yeah 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 one of the um uh, i'll share this because it's one of the one, one of my favorite things is that there is the um in nlp we have the presuppositions of nlp essentially presuppositions are assumed beliefs things that you can accept and i say to my clients like put this into practice see how this works out for you and one of those presuppositions or assumed beliefs are that people are not their behaviors. So if someone's angry, that person is not angry as identity. That person, that anger is an emotion based on an experience that they had. And so with bullies, right, and I'm not excusing bullies either, but 
these bullies, that that they are bringing out is a behavior based on something that we have no idea what that's about. And then therefore they bring it back. And then now the bullied person now has a new experience. And then that person then starts to identify whether they're going to defend, whether they're going to fight, flight, or just freeze as well. Right. Oh, I love that example. Thank you. Can you give us an example of how we use NLP with parenting? Yeah. I mean, with parenting, it's so interesting because we are our what our being, right? We communicate in this way. We have grown up with our belief systems, um, our whether, you know, person of color, community, wherever you come from, your environment. And so when we are parenting, we are either parenting from a place of this is what I experienced. I don't want to experience that anymore. Or my kids experience that. Or because I experienced that, I'm going to use some of that and have my kid experience something similar or teach them because that taught me, for example. Um, so I'll admit this one. I, I know a lot of maybe Latinos will connect, but I used to get spanked. Okay. No, and I'm okay. I'm actually okay with it, you know, because it helped. It taught me a lot. Um, and I'm not a for or against it. It depends on your parenting style. But just because I was spanked, I'm not going to go and do the same thing to my kid just because it happened to me. Mm-hmm. It's more like, what is the experience? Am I doing this through anger or what can the learning be here? So if my kid has a behavior that maybe I'm not happy with, then I have to be become aware because I'm the adult, I'm the parent. I have to become aware what caused this behavior to come up and then what kind of questions can I ask my kid to maybe improve this behavior if it's not something I look like or teach my kid something. So let's say my kid, um, I have an 11 year old uh, bonus child as well. Mm -hmm. So let's say he would have been younger, like, I don't know, five, six years old. And I, I didn't have any of this awareness. But now that I do later, years later, you know, I could have done or taught him differently. But he would cross his arms and get really angry. And then I would push, 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 like getting trying to get him to stop being angry. Where I wasn't respecting his world and his feelings at the time. I didn't understand them because in the way I grew up, it was like it didn't matter that I was angry. You're going to do what I'm going to tell you to do, right? And so now if I were to go back, hindsight, right, I would say, okay, How did this behavior start? Okay, he didn't like a suggestion that I gave him. Really, it was something I needed him to do. So then I can ask him, hey, like, what do you need in order for you to let go? Right? Because crossing your arms doesn't mean anything. Really, just you got to read body language too. So, like, what caused you to feel this anger? Like, if I can ask my kid that, then he is going to tell me, oh, because this, this, and this. And I can become aware, okay, it was in my tone, right? Because a lot of communication, people don't realize that there's different ways of how people communicate. And so we have to be aware of how my kid communicates. My kid, my bonus kid, Alex, he's very um, kinesthetic. So very feeling, right? He feels things. And so I have to communicate with him in a way that he feels what I'm telling him. Hey, Alex, um, you know... I want us to connect deeper and let's do this together, like some kind of exercise or something, or let's do cleanup time together. And he's feeling it, but he's also seeing that I'm doing this. That's a kinesthetic connection, right? Where I'm a very auditory person. And so for me, things have to sound good. They have to resonate in my mind, right? And so someone speaking to me or my mom speaking to me, she doesn't know this, but if she were, if she gives me words that I really like or even tone or how she speaks to me and she's like, Carla, retira la basura, you know, like in some angry whatever tone, I'm going to like close up probably. Mm-hmm. But if she's like, if she gives me a different tone, then I will respond to that probably in a more positive way. Um, or if someone is more like if your kid has to see how something works, you can practice communicating with them in a way that they can imagine it like hey imagine that your room looks amazing and clean and we can just have the space for us to create even more make paintings do some blocks or something you know something that's visually appealing to them 
And then there are those kids, like, also my kid is this way too. He's very um, um, logical. Things have to, like, make sense to him as well. And so explaining to them in a way that makes sense to them. Um, someone who is logical, they can actually communicate much more flu- um, fluidly in the other communication styles versus the other styles into that more logical communication. So for us as parents, if we pay attention, if we listen, if we connect with our kids, you'll be able to communicate with your kids. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So when you're working with clients, mm-hmm. do you teach uh, one of the modalities? Like, do you assess which one would be best for them or do you do all three? Mm, it depends. And the language isn't really the modality. That's just one way of how people communicate. Mm-hmm. Because in NLP, we have so many different I say NLP is like the umbrella of so many other mini modalities within it. So we can change someone's belief if they want to change their belief. We can get them to see someone else's perspective or experience someone else's perspective. Um, We can get them to stop doing some kind of habit that they don't want to do in less than like 10 minutes. So it depends on their issue, their problem. And then I determine based on that which tool which mini modality i can use with my clients and i say with because people think that it's something done to them but i can't do anything to you that you are not willing to accept so we do the work together okay i like that and i'm glad that you explained it that way because i think people do have that mentality that somebody's gonna go and transform their i mean i like to work with coaches who give me homework because i did if I have homework, if I have something to do, then that is how I'm going to actually learn it. Because I'm, mm-hmm. like you said, you're an auditory person. I can, I have to see it, I have to do it, and I have to write it out sometimes. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So you just gave me your strategy too. Mm-hmm. Right, but for you, you have to see. So I have to teach you mm-hmm. something, but I have to show you pictures probably, or you know, examples. Then you have to do it. So you put it into practical, and then it'll probably make sense to you, and you'll take action for it. Yeah, it's easier for me to... Re- so that's your learning style. Right, yeah. Which when you know those strategies, you can teach a kid too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So um, I, there are so many coaches out there to yeah. teach you what you're teaching. Mm-hmm. For people who are looking for a coach like you, what or, or what do you recommend they ask an NLP coach, you know, before hiring them? Mm-hmm. I mean, it depends. Sometimes I tell people, ask them what's important to them. Mm-hmm. Okay. To to the coach, what's important to the yeah. coach? Yeah. What's important to you about coaching someone and vice versa? I would ask my client, what's important to you about working with me as a coach? Mm-hmm. Because if you can find some kind of alignment, maybe the person wants community. And maybe for me, community is like one of my top values. Cool. There's something that we're working on. Is it, you know, like what kind of results are you asking from a coach? But really, like you said, it's not something that I do to you. Because I can work, really, I can work with anybody. I, I love working with so many different people. I worked with people in the holistic space. I worked with people in their 80s. I've worked with people in who are um, 16, um, women, men. So it depends what you come to me for. Um, people ask me parenting questions, even though I'm not, I'm, a, I'm figuring it out as a parent, right? Uh, but it's just interesting how with some awareness, things just seem more efficient. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So with with honestly, if you if there is a coach that you feel connected to, ask some questions. You know, if you feel like I do want to work with this person, maybe listen to that intuition, too, and say, what about them? Is it that I like connect to what did they tell me that I'm like, oh, oh, I needed to hear that today, right? Or um, also, what's their vibe? I mean, for, you know, it depends. Like, do I like her vibe? Is she chill? Or is she, like, super direct? Or is he, like, he'll tell me how it is, and that's what I need. Because for me, I need the direct and to the point coaching, but other people, for me, right, personally. But the way I coach, I ask my clients, do you need direct and to the point, or do you need something a little... mm, not as direct right and i can do both too which is really cool about coaching is that when you learn to coach and communicate you can do either one okay and so how often should somebody be meeting with a coach because is this one of those things where 
you can go a long period of time not really getting more information or is it like you have to stay on top of it in order to see better, better results or, or solid results so there's so many programs out there mm -hmm. honestly it depends on the person how much accountability you need um you know it i i am in a like i've done both bi-weekly and weekly and i've even some people even like monthlies mm -hmm. so it depends like the person the kind of um what do you call it, circle or environment that you want to create together um kind of like therapy some therapists recommend you see me twice a week other therapists will tell you see me weekly other therapists will tell you oh you just need monthly calls cool you're good right so it depends on where you're at in life now i've worked with coaches who got me to a certain point in life and they're like cool i'm good for now and then it, we took a break whatever and then maybe months later i was like oh man i'm stuck let me reach out to this specific coach again because i need this or I know that I, I really liked how she or he moved me from my stuck place. I'm ready to, you know, get into a program again with this person or in another six week, eight week, whatever, 12 week thing with them. Okay. Yeah. So a lot of it, I will say, is about self-responsibility, self-awareness and getting yourself out of your BS. Not just the BS, like that we all think about, but your belief systems. Like, what is it that you're believing right now that isn't allowing you to move forward in your business, in your life, in your relationship, parenting, in your health, whatever? Mm -hmm. um, and so it's about a big, a big part of it. And no, I'll give you this: I always teach people the difference between cause and effect. Okay, so there's cause and there's effect. What do you think, Dali? What do you think is cause? I know you've read the yeah. book, so you maybe you remember. Yeah. <laughs> um, cause is the action, right? Mm -hmm. what and what's, if, what's effect? The result of that action. Okay. That can be like, this is the cause and this is the effect of that. But there's also this part. So effect is the side that we are giving ourselves. Why is this happening? The reasons, the excuses. The inconsistent results. I am in effect of something, right? Something or someone caused me to feel this way. So now I'm affected. I'm in effect of this situation. Mm -hmm. Cause is where you have awareness. You take self-responsibility. You ask the question, right? And so if you bridge between both of them, when you gain awareness, then you get yourself out of effect and into cause, okay? So it's getting yourself out of victim mentality into a more victor mentality right. right so it's not this equals this it's this or this in in this in in the context of nlp okay. and so let's say um i was in effect because you know um let's say someone didn't hire me because i've gotten a lot of no's okay so let's say someone didn't hire me and they're like oh man i like ah this person just made me feel like i wasn't a good salesperson uh, and I'm crying and all the things, right? So then I'm like, wait, hold on. Let's take a pause here. What can I learn from this situation? You know, what could have gotten her to tell me no, right? And that already moved me to cause where I'm already ready to learn. I'm ready to take action and to do something differently. So no longer any excuses of like, man, I didn't, I didn't pitch her in the right way. Maybe I didn't, I didn't listen to her enough. You know, getting out of that into the side of, let me learn from this situation. And now I'm no longer in effect by that. And the way that one of my coaches put it was, she's very direct and to the point. Like I said, that's the kind of thing I need sometimes. She said, Carla, the moment that someone or situation puts you in effect, they own you. Ooh. And I was like, hey, yeah, yeah, I don't want them to own me. I want to own my myself, right? And so the moment she told me that, I, I was like, oh, there was a person who kept putting me in effect and they don't even know that they did. Mm -hmm. And then I was like, I'm no longer allowing that person to put me into these feelings anymore. And the moment I did that, I was like, oh, yeah, like I can talk to the person. You know, maybe we have our differences and things like that. But I'm no longer like, well, like I don't get all hints about that person anymore. Yeah. You know, this is what I like about NLP. 
Um, and of course, I read the book. I didn't understand all of it. I'm going to be honest, because sometimes, you know, like I said, I have to read it, it to practice it, and I have to write it out. Mm-hmm. Um, but what I love is that it really, it's not like psychotherapy. Yeah, you talk about mm-hmm. it now. But this one is very actionable. And I feel like just reading it made me really check in deep. Mm-hmm. But it wasn't like it was it wasn't really hard to do, and mm-hmm. which is the crazy part, because if everybody knew how to do these tiny little exercises, we, we would all be completely different people. Oh, yeah, for um, sure. And so, I mean, oh, my gosh, this should be taught like in elementary school. <laughs> yes. <laughs> because, yes. Yeah. Yeah. I because agree. You change if you can. It's creating a deep sense of, of awareness, which is what a lot of us lack. Mm-hmm. And we don't have self-awareness. We make decisions that you know sometimes doesn't serve us or other people Mm -hmm. Um, so when people are working with you how long is the program or how long do you recommend that they work with you in order to get you know like good results that Mm -hmm. and say like okay this i went through this Mm -hmm. it really changed me maybe not of course all but you know kind of like to get you started yeah um the minimum i work with someone is 10 weeks like on a one-on-one basis. Uh-huh. Um, I can go longer. But the way that I coach in the beginning is, mm, and this isn't just why anybody, but in the beginning is more, it's more intense in the beginning. <laughs> Let's just put it that way. Uh-huh. To get through all this, sh- can I cuss? I'm, let me, you yeah, know, you can. Go ahead. we get through all the want. crap. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we get through all the crap Um, in the beginning. We make sure we're like, you know what? We're not going to stuck, be stuck in this. How long have you had that problem? 10 years? Let's get rid of it right now. Let's work on removing that right now. Because what's keeping you from letting it go now? Really is a question. Are you ready now to let that go that has been holding you back for five years? Right? Have you been stuck in this place of anxiety? And anybody that's listening to this or watching this is free from this. Have you been stuck with anxiety since the vid year? And you're ready to stop that anxiety and want to take control and power of your own body and your own mind. And so if you're ready now, like, let's start this work. Because trust me that those feelings can be gone in, like, not the feelings, but the the stuckness of those feelings in, like, within an hour or so. Mm-hmm. You know? So it's really, like, there's literally those things that can be done in 15 minutes or less. Mm-hmm. There's some work that, you know, takes a little longer. And that's okay. It depends on the person and where they're at. And I'm here to meet you where you're at. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so- then I also have the the container of the NLP training, which teaches you how to do these things that I do with you. Um, use the modalities for yourself. So you can work on it for yourself, right? If you want the self-responsibility and you want to learn how to communicate, you can learn that to do that and if you can like reframe yourself in five minutes like that's the cool thing about it i think that's also the thing that's so hard for people to believe that in five minutes you're gonna change something that you've been carrying for so many years so can you talk a little bit more about that it depends it depends on the on the person Mm -hmm. because some people um have the belief that nothing works so nothing works and i believe you i respect anybody's model of the world that's another um uh, presupposition of NLP is respect everybody's model of the world. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, some people are like, how, what? Like, nah, that's not going to work. Cool. It's not going to work because you don't believe it's going to work. But if you're like, you know, I, I've had, I've been stuck with this for five years and I think I want to try something different. I promise you that I believe in you and I will help you move those gears that have been stuck in a way that feels like you've polished them or you oiled them. Mm-hmm. And trust me, when you are open to learning and to changing something, more things will change than you think. Mm-hmm. Like if 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 you can let go of anxiety for yourself, guess what? The ripple effect happens around you in your environment. Your kids will feel it. Your partner will feel it. Your friends will feel it. When I went through my trainings and my certifications, you know, I used to say that I didn't feel anger, that I couldn't feel anger. And then we figured out that it was repressed. It was a repressed emotion. And now I know what it feels like, which is very interesting. 
Mm -hmm. Um, But I'm aware of it and I'm okay with it. And then even people around me tell me, Carla, like you weren't someone that I noticed before, but I now notice you Mm -hmm. because I'm no longer afraid to feel those emotions and be okay with those emotions and accept those emotions. Mm -hmm. I'm okay with being a human being and understanding that, yeah, I'm a coach and an OP, but also I don't have it all together and that's okay. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing. Like sometimes people come in with their egos and like, yeah, I'm doing all of this. But if I can say, for example, I've, I've been a doula since college and as a doula, we're there to help parents, welcome their babies and everything. But when I got pregnant, I told my my people, my community, I said, hey, I don't know anything. I'm coming in as a student and I'm open to learning. Mm-hmm. And the moment that I opened myself up to that, things did open up for me. And I was willing to just take the journey as it came, but also learn from the situations. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. Hopefully that answered your question. Oh yeah, definitely. And I love how you how you post it because um, I the, the purpose of that question was so that people understand what the difference is and how intense it can be. With and I don't want to scare people by saying intense because most people think it's a negative thing. But I feel mm-hmm. when it comes to coaching, mm-hmm. intense is amazing. Intense yep. is what most people need but are afraid to go for. And and I like that you mentioned the first uh, few meetings are harder and more intense. Yeah, they're, because they're they're, they're not harder. harder. They're just different. Yeah, yeah. So it's like that foundation, um, and then from there on, hopefully, it's like smooth sailing. Uh, yeah. So how can people reach out to you and get onto your yeah. calendar? So I'm I'm big on Instagram. Yeah, I use Facebook, but it's the same handle, Coach Carlita. And I have the podcast if you want to listen to it. And that one's more about people's stories and hopefully you getting inspired. Maybe modeling someone who you feel like is excellent. Um, so yeah, it's yeah, on Facebook. Same handle, uh, Carlita. Okay. And the podcast name? Metafit Metamind Podcast. Okay, great. Wonderful. Uh, Carla, thank you so much for explaining, you know, how you work with people, how people can change their mindset and pretty much change your life if they're just open to it. Um, any last uh, tidbits that you'd like to share before we wrap it up? Yeah, I would say remember that you are human. We're not meant to do anything alone and it's okay to ask because it's more powerful to ask for help versus pretending like you have it all together and then not get anything done. Mm-hmm. I wish you would have said that to me when I was a kid. <laughs> if I could have used that. <laughs> that was, yes, thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. One of the things that I, um, I hope that you, I hope that you enjoyed that conversation with Gana. We didn't dive in too much into her NLP training. Well, I'll probably invite her to come back and talk a little bit more about that or maybe even have like a Facebook live, but I'll let you all know in my newsletter. If you have not subscribed, go to dalitalks.com and you'll see the subscription box pop up. So please make sure you go ahead and do that. She mentioned uh, her NLP training, which will be in July. She informed me that that will be the last live NLP training that she will have because she's moving everything to uh, remote and, you know, like pre-recorded stuff, um, courses for her clients. So make sure that if you want to uh, learn about it, to get some training on that for yourself or just to uh, become a coach even. Um, reach out to her okay all right well once again thank you so much for tuning in please share this recording and let us know what you thought about the conversation in the comments bye-bye hey did you like that episode if you did be sure to subscribe to this podcast wherever you may be listening and write a review if you want more tips or some behind the scenes videos make sure to follow my mom at dolly talks on instagram you can turn on notifications for her posts and stories as well Thank you so much for listening to this podcast. See you next time.